Hey, who doesn't like a cold beer every now and then? We all have our favorites. There's ales, stouts, lagers, porters. Now the latest crazes, ready to drink cocktails and seltzers. How do you make sense of it all? Well, it's a good thing we have the gurus from Ketsif Brothers to sort it all out. Sit back, relax, eavesdrop for a bit as we talk about the latest beers, seltzers, cocktails, and the best local events that need to be on your calendar. You ready? Let's get to it. You know, we are at one of the most unique places we've been in a while, talking with the folks from Catsup Brothers, but we are on the Wilma Lee at the Annapolis Maritime Museum and Park. We're on their museum campus over here in Eastport. We have Captain Bill, who has uh, graciously allowed us on board, and uh, we found a little bit of their uh, booze stash, so we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. But Well, that booze stash actually, actually came from Bay Ridge. Bill and I did a little <laughs> quick pickup on our way here, so you could taste the flavors of fall. That's right. Oh, it's August still, and we're talking about fall. But Sorry, John. <laughs> but, you know, but Bill, this is such a great boat. It's a great tour. I mean, Annapolis has a number of tours. I'm sitting here looking out over the bay, and I see the uh, the fairly new parasailer or paraglider out there. You know, we've, we've, of course, got the woman. We've got the iconic Harbor Queen. But for my money, nothing touches it quite like the Wilma Lee does because, I mean, you've got, you've got the bay. You've got sailing. You've got history uh and and you've got authenticity i mean it's not a, it's, this is not a new boat right that's correct she's 82 years old she was built on the eastern shore by a gentleman named bronza parks and um she operated as a dredger oyster dredger for 55 years until 1995 she was then purchased and converted to how she looks today a little more a little more uh comfort a little more elegance uh, sleeping berths, air conditioning, <laughs> a galley. A head. A head. <laughs> <laughs> we need a toilet. Us women need toilets. <laughs> and a refrigerator for the And drinks. a refrigerator, yes, for the yeah, but, um Yeah, so we're sitting outside of McNasby, so I think the skipjack is is uh, iconic to the Annapolis exactly. area, the oyster industry in particular. Um, so the oysters that were um, gathered by the skipjacks and processed by McNasby has got as far as Iowa. Oh, wow. wow. Iced down, wow. shipped to Ohio, re-iced in Ohio, and so proteins uh, shipped harvested. Shipped by train? By train, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, so yeah, um, skipjacks like the Wilma Lee are, are, are part and parcel of uh, the Chesapeake Bay industry. Well, they're pretty rare, too. I mean, there's only a handful, I think, that are still floating and sailing, aren't there? There are 23. Okay. And to my knowledge, only five are still dredging, but there are 23 afloat. Wow, are they all in the Chesapeake Bay? I mean, I know the Skipjack was pretty much a Chesapeake Bay boat. She, she, uh, yes, she is a Chesapeake Bay boat because, a little trivia, in 1888, uh, the Maryland State Legislature regulated that oysters could only, only be dredged under sail power. They were trying to slow down the harvest because we were over-harvesting the bay. That was probably pretty smart of them back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it didn't work because they still over-harvested the bay. So that is why the skipjack was designed. Um, so in, prior to 1888, you wouldn't have known of a skipjack in the, in the Chesapeake Bay, but immediately they needed to find a way to build a boat that could dredge oysters. Interesting. Well, today we are sitting dockside. Um, the lines are securely wrapped around a cleat, and I think uh, you've been working down in the engine compartment just to make sure it's there. But right now it sits here at the Annapolis Maritime Museum, and you guys take it out for sales, um, I, you know, depending on, obviously, the weather, but, I mean, three times a day, I believe, right? As many as. Yeah, yeah. there's four different types of sales that we do. Uh, this morning I was out with a group of campers. Uh, the, the Annapolis Maritime Museum oper- operates a summer camp. And so they we were could, happy campers, I bet. They were happy campers, yeah. Today, uh, sometimes we take them out, we dredge. Sometimes we take them out to fish. Today, we took them out with uh, drawing pads, and they were drawing what they could see from the water. Oh, very cool. That is so cool. Yeah, isn't that cool? I have two two boys, of course, and one of them is home with my husband right now because he doesn't start school until Monday. And my husband's been drawing chores for him to do, like, you know, a little box and then drawing a toothbrush and then drawing a basketball hoop, da 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 And so Baron today actually drew what his chores were on the piece of paper. So that's... Yeah, it was a great way for the kids to explore, exactly. I think. Exactly. Uh, just something different to engage. Um, they uh, There are kids who maybe go to school 10 miles from here who have never seen the Chesapeake Bay. So wow. I personally, as, as a captain, see it as a, a real mission to, to give access to people who don't have access to the water. I've heard that for years, that there are even kids within the city of Annapolis that have yet to ever get out on the water. They're lifelong, and that's 
it's so unfortunate because we live in such a really fortunate place and such a great resource that we have. Yeah, we're really, yeah, the maritime industry is hurting because of that, because people don't think of it as a place, as a career opportunity, and it really is still. But so we do four tours. We do campers. We do a historic or heritage tour, uh, middays, one o'clock, usually on the weekends. And we have a docent who gives a, a really nice presentation of the oyster industry, the history of the oyster industry, the history of the Annapolis area. And then we'll do um, Wednesday night races. I'm doing that tonight. Mm -hmm. We'll go out and watch the Wednesday night racers. And we have beverages and snacks for folks. Devil's backbone beverages. There you go. And um, and then we also do private charters where people can charter the boat. Very neat. Very neat. Well, I tell you, I was out on one of your history tours one time. I guess it was last year. And I learned something about Trident Light at the end of uh, the Naval Academy right there on the point. That in the foundation of it, there is something hidden in there. It is uh, a vial or a vat or something like that with water from all seven oceans or all seven seas. It's a glass sphere. Yeah. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Pretty cool. I never never knew that. Yeah. Get out and be a tourist in your own town. Um, <laughs> exactly. It, it, I mean, you learn something new, and uh, there's nothing better than getting out for a sail on the bay. Uh, you can go to amaritime.org, and you can book, you know, your, your sail. Uh, we do have a code, actually. If you want to say five bucks, it's... Uh, I'm not real big on the code, but it's I spy five, <laughs> um, which okay. is. Uh, it works. But they we'll gave they, they five dollars off. They gave it to me, so get your neighbors all together and you know take five bucks off of all of them. But it's, and and while you're here, you want to make sure that you do check out the Maritime Museum because it, if you haven't been in a year and a half, it's not your father's Maritime Museum that was here, you know, four years ago. It's they've done a multi-million dollar display there's a temporary display on now through i think it's through november and part of it's leaving in september but uh on sea level rise and it's just really a very fascinating high-tech place there's a holographic waterman that talks to you there's virtual reality and you get into a boat and you can figure out whether you're sailing or dredging or whatever you're doing and uh, i do recommend everybody become a member i mean it's not very expensive to be a member the perks are great if you have a boat and a certain level of membership, you can dock here for free for their parties, which are always very good. Yeah, it fills up fast. Yeah. It is. Well, I think the next big party they got going here is the uh, Boatyard Beach Bash. But you know what? When we told everybody a couple months ago, that puppy sold out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, there's always a good party here at the Maritime Museum. But definitely, if you have not experienced the Wilma Lee uh, and Captain Bill or Captain Rick, you are both outstanding and um it's a lot of fun it's not very crowded i mean the capacity is what like, 36 okay on on a 74 foot 76 foot boat yeah okay. yeah we, we've only hit capacity a few times usually we have somewhere around 20 to 25 so there's always there's plenty of space and it's, and it's a great place to go for if you've got a small wedding would be awesome or yeah. a uh, bachelorette parties uh, neighborhood gatherings we had a, a retirement community come out last uh sunday you know, I'm digging the creaking. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you hear the you hear the boat creaking. I mean, we're on a on a wooden boat, so I mean, it's a combination of probably the the lines on the to the dock as well as the uh, fenders and the and the boat itself. It's yeah, where the boom meets the mast. There's a there's a collar there made of leather. That's what's creaking. So yeah, and uh, a great old wooden mast. And I, I don't want to say old because I do know that that's a new wooden mast. But it's a... you listen to when you're on the heritage tour. I, didn't I you? do, and I even know the I even know the backstory on that mast. So oh, excellent. So it's uh, it's kind of neat. But I do recommend uh, you know coming out here, and you, you can't go wrong. Uh, Captain Bill or Captain Rick going to steer you right because that's their job because if they can't steer it right man we're you know. in the end of the day we're steering right and, right and it's steering back to the maritime museum <laughs> um, but you know thank you so much for allowing us on board and thank you for your time today and um well, yeah. we're great to have you aboard thanks for the uh the chance to talk about her and uh encouraging people to come out is there any little little secret that we don't know about it uh, there's, she an haunted? there's an interesting thing about skipjacks. They don't have to, you don't have to be a shipwright to build it, uh, just a, a handy carpenter. So they, there's a thing called ship uh, skipjack math. So the length of the boat overall, so the deck plus the bowsprit, is the same length as the mast. So you start with a mast, you go out in the forest and find a tree or buy a tree or buy a mast, and then that determines the length of the boat. Then the boom, the part that is at the foot of the mainsail, is the length of the deck. Interesting. And then the bowsprit is the determines the breadth oh, wow. or the beam of the boat. So that was there's no drawings. There's no there's no plan. They they have that basic skipjack math and they just start going. All right. So if I were to build a skipjack today based on that skipjack math, and I cut down that tree over there, I'm going to ultimately build a 34 foot 
skipjack. If that's a 34 foot per tree, tree. That, would, that, that limits the, by skipjack math, that limits the size of your boat. That's kind of cool. That's like those measurements. They say that the distance between your arms <laughs> is yeah. your height. Yeah. Uh, and then the your foot is the size between like your wrist and your elbow or something like Same that. Same idea. Yeah, the idea was they needed these things built fast. They need, uh, they, eventually there were thousands of them on the bay, thousand plus, and they needed wow. to be able to build them fast. And it was a lucrative business. I was going to say, it's got to be fairly easy to do. I mean, you just know what, you know, here's what the size is. Let's cut it in. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Thanks learn for something having new. Me. Every time I come onto this skip deck, I learn something new. Thank you so much. It's great to be with y'all. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Thank Captain you. Bill. Captain That's Bill. Right. Well, we do have Cassie who's been chiming in here throughout the day, of course. And joining us now, we have Bill Catron, who is bringing goodies with him today. How are you, man? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, we brought in um, some Devil's Backbone Key Lime Smash. Um, that is uh, spirit based. We also brought in some Cutwater Vodka Mule some uh, Goose Island Oktoberfest and Elysian, the great pumpkin, which it is pumpkin season, John. So I know you've been really wanting to try that key lime smash, which is I, partly I, why we added that in there. It is the, the seasonal variety pack right now. Um, but the vodka mule, I, whenever, whenever I think of mule, I think of fall. Yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, the Oktoberfest, tis, right. tis the season, and the great American pumpkin, or great pumpkin, rather, from Elysian, um, obviously throwing one of those pumpkin beers in. I know Bill wants to talk a lot about pumpkin today. Well, that's cool. Well, the Devil's Backbone, this smash is available here on the Wilma Lee, not only for our podcast, but for in the cooler when you come out on it, I think. Absolutely. But, I mean, so we're really into pumpkin season now. Yeah, oh, yeah. We've been into pumpkin season for, honestly, about two weeks now. So it, it started right at the beginning of August. That's crazy Yeah. to me, but, you know, I, I get it. Every year it keeps getting, it feels like it's earlier and earlier, you know? Absolutely. Well, don't just sit here and look at that. Let me I taste. Know. Let me taste that. Okay, I'm just waiting for you to crack it. Okay. So the first one up. This is going to be the key lime smash. This is a 10% alcohol, and then this is made with 100% real Cracking spirits. Cracking beers, y'all. I am so psyched because we haven't tasted in a long time. So I'm like pretty excited about that. We went out out of our way to get this for you too, John, because we know how much you wanted to try this. You know. Oh damn, that's good. Isn't that really good? It's good. I mean, it's. Uh, so it's tar it's tartar like I oh, I was thinking tart. it would be more like your sweeter version of key lime pie, but it's it's tart. Yeah, it's really good. It's like your grandma's key lime pie without For, all the sugar. Yes, yes, right? yes. Like true key lime pie. Throw this over some ice and unbelievable. Throw a uh, throw a wedge of lime in there and. Yeah, and for wow. those who can't see it, obviously, because we're, we're doing a podcast, but the color on this is, is it's a really nice, like, almost clear color, but you can see where you have the lime juice in it, so it gives it that little bit of that tint of uh, green hue, and it just goes down so easy. And one thing I would say is, like these guys are also saying in the background, that it is very tart, which is nice. I actually think that it makes you want to drink more. The Eastern it's, it's refreshing. It's, yeah. it's, it's good. Well, and, too, when you, when you look, look at, at it, you can see some sediment yep. in there, oh, which act is yeah. actually the key lime skin. Yeah, or is the skin or the pulp? I think or pulp, maybe. Uh, Bill's, yes, Bill's right. Can. It's pulp. And if we had those kids from that field trip on here this morning, they'd probably be able to put some kind of a tool in there and tell us what the viscosity or whatever the word is. Yeah. <laughs> the turbidity. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. It would I'll, leave, I'll leave it to them on that education. So, that, is, yeah. that is real good. Yeah, their whole line is very good, actually. I mean, I, this is one of my favorites because you, you just don't see the, the key limes out there. They make an orange smash, which is to die for as well, which is phenomenal. I've, I have had that. I did have to go hunting for that. I found it down at Stan and Joe's down in Galesville um, after hunting for it for a while. But is this going to be Is this a year-round? Uh, yes. I mean, I mean, it, it screams summer to me. Yeah, I think that this is available year-round. Wow, okay. Yeah, so... Good, good. So that's this one. So the next one up is a vodka mule. This is from Cutwater. Cutwater is from San Diego, California. This is uh, what we're trying, 7% um, alcohol by volume. It is 100% spirits on this. They make their own ginger beer, and they also make their own uh, vodka to go in this. Uh, one of the most award-winning uh, distilleries in America. but And one that we, we talk about a lot yeah. because of the, the volume and the excitement behind this brand. Um, it's really, it's, it's moving off those shelves super fast, but I thought the mule would be a, a great fall. Okay. I can, uh, the, it's heavy on the ginger Football. beer. Oh, oh yeah. You know, tailgating, 
outside in the chili in front of a fire like whenever i think of ginger i don't know why vodka oh, ginger beers this is this is one of my favorites i so before cutwater ever came into our portfolio i was drinking a ton of tito's and mixing it with my own ginger beer you know uh one thing i like about this is it adds a hint of lime to it so you can taste that at the very end of it very easy to drink um the thing that i love about cutwater is the refinement like if you try if you try any of their rtds they always taste like they have a little bit more refinement than some of the other ones i've tried they just and and honestly it comes through with the liquid i, I think that this is something that you should have in your cooler anywhere you go it's just easy 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 to drink you know i hate to say this being in annapolis and all but they should really go up to west point and market that to army and, yeah you know, a mule with a kick because that's like kind of their thing yeah you know I see I'm reading the back of the label there. It's uh, good. <laughs> G- ginger beer is really good. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're um, well, they, they make a lot of, like, stuff like that. But it is, their margarita mix, all that kind of yeah. stuff is phenomenal. I'm surprised it's clear. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, for the ginger beer, it's not too cloudy. Wasn't most ginger beer clear? No, they, they, they tend to be a little bit cloudy. Okay. Yeah. Like ginger ale-ish. A little bit. A little bit yeah. different. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit heavier. Yeah, that's definitely got some spice to it. Um, good. And that's what's that one called? That is called the Cutwater Vodka, vodka Mule. Mule. Yep. Awesome. Yep. All right. What's, what's the blue can? So this is Goose Island Oktoberfest. So that looks like a Bavarian flag. That does. John. That does. That doesn't look like yeah. an October beer with a blue can with. <laughs> it's like the Bavarian flag. Uh, Cassie is right. It does look like the Bavarian flag. So this is 5.7% alcohol. It's a Meritzen style beer. Uh, Meritzen means March in Germany. So that what they would do is they would brew this beer in March and then release it for Oktoberfest, which is in September. So they would store it. So lager in German means to store. And so they would actually lager this beer and then bring it out when it was actually uh, ready to go. Like Damn, I'm learning so much today <laughs> between the boat. So Yo, I just rocked. Mar- Martha just means rocked March back. and lager means to store? Yeah, it does mean to store. Yeah. So it, a, a lager the, beer, the by definition, this. means that it's been stored for a period of time? Yeah, and then so they've changed it over the years, uh, a couple of things. So like Meritzen, right? If you look at the color of this, it's going to have a little bit more malt characteristic to it. So when you look at it, it's got kind of an amber color mm-hmm. and it tastes like that too. With the invention of uh, glass, like see-through glass, um, before that there was uh, kind of like a, a stoneware. Uh, earthen glass that people would use, especially in Germany, like at Oktoberfest and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, when they started figuring out, like, hey, we have clear glass, they didn't want to see darker beer, so then they went kind of towards the Hellesbach or a lager-style beer. That's why, like, when you go to Germany, all the beers are, are like, a almost like a bright golden lager style. But they're Hellesbach, yeah. Well, this one poured beautifully. Oh, it's phenomenal. So, yeah, so this one, easy to drink, like I said. It's going to have a lot of malt content to it. 23 IBUs, which is the International Bitterness Unit, so it's not very hoppy. Um, just easy to drink. It's going to have tetaning hops in it, so it's you know really nice, um, noble style hops, and just easy to drink. And the higher the IBU, the bitter, more bitter it is. More bitter, yeah. And then it gets to a certain point where if it gets too bitter, like you, you, this doesn't register. I've, I've had there was a one Belgian beer made by a brewery called Della Senna, which is called Terras Bulba. And it's, it depicts a play on it. But anyways, it was like the most bitter beer I've ever had. And at a certain point, my, my flavor, my profile was just like right. shot. Right. So, I'm looking but, at your key ring here, Bill. And I mean, yeah. you're prepared for anything, man. You've got bottle openers. You've got car keys. You've got house keys. You've got work keys. Oh, wait, and you've but got, he has And you've got hand sanitizer. sanitizer. <laughs> well, I was a Boy Scout and I'm a germaphobe. So there's those two things. The pandemic did nothing to help me. I'll tell you that. You're a germaphobe with honesty. Yeah. <laughs> At least I'm honest. Yeah, exactly. So this next beer that we're going to try, this is from Elysian. So Elysian's from the West Coast. You can actually smell the spice in this. So you're going to get some, like, allspice and nutmeg Yes, in this. yes, yes. Um, and it does bring forth the season. Um, one thing I like really about Elysian, they're known for space dust. They were one of the first breweries that went out there, and they were using what? citra hops in space dust so they kind of made that that style of citra ipas and that that's kind of what started them but what what they're really known for out of everything is their pumpkin beers they actually have a gourd festival every year where they take the biggest pumpkin they can find fill it up with beer and they tap the pumpkin oh that's didn't we have a chance to go to that festival yeah we did 
But yeah, they make like at and least, the pumpkin was massive. It's massive, yeah, and they make like fifteen pumpkin beers. Uh, some of them stay only in like you know the Seattle area and stuff like that, and we get some of them here. Uh, this is one of them. This is the great pumpkin. This is an imperial pumpkin ale. So anytime you see imperial, you know it's going to have more alcohol, eight point four percent. And like I said, you're going to get some of that that pumpkin spice. You're going to get you know. The flavor of pumpkin seed in this, some some. Oh, it's, it's very nutmeg. very strong. It's very good. Yeah. Now, do they change this up sure. from year to year? I mean, is this the same? Um, this one, this one, they make every year. Um, they also make a couple other ones, like the Night Owl, which is another pumpkin variety, and they make Punkachino, which is you know obviously it's a it's a dark chocolate kind of like coffee pumpkin. Mm -hmm. But they they there's some that stay primarily at the brewery, but this is one of the ones that we get every year. Interesting, interesting. Well, I'll tell you, man. There's a lot of. Um, Stuff coming up that we can drink this crap at. <laughs> oh, it's really uh, good. I mean, I mean, you know, you can obviously come out here, but the Boatyard Beach Bash we talked about was sold out, right? The Maritime Museum over on the the west side of the creek is going to have their uh, summer sunset series. September sunsets. September sunsets. At Back Creek Nature Park. Yep. Yep. Well, so it's, it's at their their place the over creek. there. Yes. Yeah. So at the park. Yes, that will kick off um, is, is all four Thursdays in September. You know, coming up, we've got, and certainly we're talking about some October beers, but we've got the West Annapolis Oktoberfest. That's on Sunday the 25th, right? Yes. Uh, Are they going full board on that yet? Full board. I think they have 120 vendors signed up, leading with Spotten, Spotten Oktoberfest. Bronze is Connor, of course, our, our, our bread and butter, Bud Light. Uh, should be a great Sunday. That's always a lot of fun. Always. That's, that's always a good time. West Annapolis. Beer garden area. West Annapolis is coming into its own with the restaurants they and, really and everything that they've got. And, and when you when they did that Christmas market a couple of years ago, and certainly when you got the Clydesdales that come, give them a couple of know. years, and they're going to be revitalizing faster than we can keep up. Oh, they they really are. And you know, a little bit before that though, too, you've got something brand new for Annapolis. You've got the Annapolis Songwriters Festival, which yes. I'm really kind of excited to see how that goes. I'm talking with them yes. a little bit later this week just to find out how to do it because I think. I'm seeing a little bit of chatter like, oh, wow, that's so expensive. But you don't, I mean, there's a but ton so of, cool. well, there's a ton of free stuff. That too. And and it's also what led, it's led by the Ramshead Group. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ramshead Presents is doing it. And they, they do the Key West Songwriters Festival. And chance to be up close and personal with all of these great songwriters and artists and stuff like that. So, I mean, that that's where the cost comes in to get them in here. But there is so much free that's going on. And we're going to talk about how to do that because I know when the film festival came into town, Nobody really knew how to do it because, I mean. Because there is going to be so many things happening throughout the entire weekend, not just at City Dock or MC3 or Maryland Hall. There's several partnering restaurants and bars and taverns that will be hosting some of these songwriters. Right. Throughout the weekend. Right. And, it's, and it's, you can go and you can sit there and have a meal at McGarvey's maybe and listen to some music. Right, and listen to how so they, these folks how, are out of Nashville too, and how they developed it and everything else. It goes September fifteenth, Annapolis Songwriters Festival dot com, and see it. But it's, uh, I'm I'm really kind of excited for it because I and I, it's something new to Annapolis, and I think it's really something very cool that could become a signature, sort of like the Film Fest. And I do remember the first year of the Film Fest that it was people really just didn't understand or how to do it, and they were looking like, oh my gosh, three hundred dollars for a a pass or whatever it was. When I think their goal is to start small and then eventually expand it over you know annapolis and eastport and and just make it a, an, an all week all weekend right songwriters festival and i think i think it's gonna be awesome right and, and the last thing on my list is where you can you know pick up some of these beers and have some fun would be the uh Blazers bourbon and cigars. So maybe not these beers, but definitely your your Budweiser, John. Um, and then we'll be highlighting the Walker's K bourbon from King Spirits. I'll let Bill talk a little bit about that, as well as the Pratt Standard Old Fashioned will be sampling. Yeah, very smooth on the uh, on the on the Walker's K and all that kind of stuff. Just phenomenal liquid. Actually, that's from the Bush family that brought that to us. So um, very Bush, like Anheuser Bush. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Bush actually to be. Um, you know, a matter of fact, I will say that uh, very easy to drink, very smooth. It's not not too much heat on the end, but it's pretty up there in proof. I think the proof on it last time I looked was 90. So oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't have the burn doesn't, that you get off. Doesn't the feel it. And it yeah. supports uh, Bohemian Relief. Yeah, they've given a lot of money back to actual uh, to the school. Well, so Walker's K is an island out in uh, right in the Bahamas. Yeah, right. And then they gave uh, quite a bit of proceeds back to rebuilding schools after. 
the hurricane that just hit last a couple years ago. So. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that Blazers bourbon and cigars that came about because all the men in town were pissed off that the women had their pay a girlfriend, girlfriend's, girlfriend's, girlfriend's party. party. I said, hey, you know that? <laughs> Where I got to wear all my dresses. It's pretty damn sexist, and uh, so they turned around and. Uh, Brought it, uh, brought it in for the I men. love it. And our sales rep, Michael Levisser, this is one of his favorite events. He has attended every single year. Will not be able to attend this year. but um, Oh, no. Why not? Dad, Things going on? Dad duty. Oh, no. Kids. They get, in, get in the way of everything, don't they? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we've got some great beers here. We've got the Oktoberfest by Goose Island, which... Uh, You've got the Elysian Fields. Elysian Fields? Uh, Elysian. 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 Why do I want to put Fields in there? Uh, I don't know. There's probably a song called Elysian Fields or a band or something like that. But you've got the Great Pumpkin, which has real heavy pumpkin, you know, uh, you know, and it's good. Right. It's good. Uh, I'm going back for seconds on the Key Lime Smash, I think. And then uh, that's <laughs> Devil's Backbone, and you got Cutwater's Vodka Mule. That's all yours. John, these all these opens are yours too. Ooh, mix them, man. I'll be mix trashed. I'll, I'll be I'll be trashed by the time I get out of Eastport. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to see that we're getting back into fall. I mean, I'm ready for the weather to break a little bit. I mean, we're sitting here under an umbrella on the deck of <laughs> the Wilma League, which is very nice of them to bring the umbrella out to get oh, us out gosh, of the sun yeah. anyhow. Again, get out to the Wilma League. Go out and on a sail. See what the Annapolis Maritime Museum and Park has to offer. It's it's a great educational thing and. It, they really mix education, history, and parties together really, really they well. They do. They do. Well, they have the perfect venue, venues, mm -hmm. plural, for all of those things. They absolutely do. And, and now they have a boat. True. And we've probably heard Osprey in the background yes. over, uh, I see one out on a piling right now, and we've heard the boats creaking, and I can't think of and a better wind place wind chimes? To I heard a few wind chimes, too. Oh, wind chimes. I can't stand wind chimes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, they're, 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 that's like, that's like me nails on a chalkboard for me. Yeah. This just gives you yeah. so much peace. It really does. Yeah, well, we're going to end it on that note. <laughs> thank you, John. Uh, we will see you guys, I guess, next month or so. But thank you so much for your 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 education and your expertise, as always, Bill. I learned something new. I uh, learned about Marzen or Ma Mar 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 Marzen and um, what lager means. Who knew? Cassie, thank you, as always. Good to see you. And we'll see what goes on next week or next month. Thank you. Cheers. This I in Annapolis bonus podcast has been brought to you by Ketsif Brothers, the area's largest beer distributor. Please check them out at thegreatestbeers.com. Oh, and don't forget to check out ionanapolis.net for all your local news, opinions, and events.